Hi, my name is Sean O'Connor. I am a director from Ireland, and I'm really glad to be here with Chris Gordon on Hellblazer Biz. Everyone, I have the privilege in the company of Sean O'Connor, uh, a director from Ireland, as you've just heard before. <laughs> so, joining me today to talk about his uh, new short film, A White Horse. So, good evening, Sean. Good evening, Chris. Great to be here. Yeah, it's great to have you. Thank you for joining me. Uh, so, we've just been uh, having a great little chat off, off record. So, uh, <laughs> and getting, and getting used to the old uh, lockdown that we're, that we're in at the moment, and, uh, which gives the opportunity in a way to, to watch more films, more short films. So, this is great because I've got a publicist friend who I said, send them all over because I love watching stuff and it's all new to me, all these films, and, and they're really good. So. Great, great. Good to hear. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I've been I've been in inhaling Netflix and Amazon Prime recently as well. I've gotten through more more films and series than, than I have did, I have ever done in my life before this, you know. Yeah, it's yeah. Um, <laughs> I think pretty much everyone I think is uh, like I said completed Netflix I've completed yeah. everything now. So yeah. <laughs> so I'm 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 really thrilled when I get sent stuff like this and especially films like yours a white horse as well because um, I've watched that. And I, I love a film I mean short films are great um and I find it mm-hmm. It's one of my questions for you is, is, is that around the, how hard it is for you to tell a story within the 10 minute period? Because I mean, I think yours was written, this one, A White Horse was actually written by Paul, wasn't it? It was indeed, yeah. It was written by a, um, a screenwriter Cahill, friend. Yeah. yeah, Paul Cahill, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no, I mean, I've been, I, I've made a bunch of short films myself. I mean, I've, uh-huh. I've ri- written written some of them. Um, but uh, but yeah, I know it's, it, it's a great question. Um, I mean, I guess... Uh, I always think of the, there's a, a quote from uh, Ray Bradbury or um, uh, something he said in maybe in a lecture years ago, but he always talked about, you know, the, he said the mistake that writers make is often that they get to their like mid twenties, they say they're going to be a writer and then they try to write the great American novel. And if they have, if they haven't written the great Gatsby by 27, they give up. And then, but because it's impossible to kind of, you know, un- yeah. un- un- unless you are like F. Scott Fitzgerald or, or someone, you know, unless you've got like um, preternatural talent, <laughs> you're yeah. not going to, like you, you're not going to write the great American novel. But he said, what you can do is bang out a short story every week and just keep doing it. And you may write stuff that's good, write stuff that's bad, write stuff that's indifferent, whatever, but write something every week, make, write a short story every week. And in doing so, you are familiarizing yourself with the craft, with the discipline, and with with story structure. Uh, read as much you can, uh, as much as you can, as well. And I kind of think the same thing goes for film. You know, it's just that um, because it's essentially a scene, but uh, you do have to kind of compress a more kind of like a whole story into it. Mm-hmm. Um, but there is such discipline, in it and you and I mean, and the the the, the basic discipline of disciplines of like um, uh, uh, writing and editing screenplays are in it of uh, working with actors and um, editing and all the rest of us. Um, so it's a great stepping stone to, to, to working uh, towards a feature. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, I've been, um, uh, I, and, and I'm going to film festivals over the years. I've seen um, so many filmmakers work in short films and have gone into working features and such yet and since. So uh, yeah, it's great. It's a great, uh, it's an art unto, unto itself, but it's also a great stepping stone. Excellent. Great answer. Mm. Thanks, Sean. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's good to hear. But I say shorts are great. I mean, I'm not knocking shorts at all. I actually mm. campaigned a couple of years back when I started looking at them. And I said that every cinema in the UK, obviously America as well, but at the time it was UK indie. What we should do, instead of playing all these useless adverts at the beginning that no one's interested in, we should start advertising and playing short films at the beginning. Just like they used to. You think they used to quite a few decades ago, didn't they? They Just did. Got, just start, you know, just yeah, like yours, like a white horse, put a white horse on before one of the feature films and stuff. So everyone get, you know, you get the films get out there. They're in the cinemas. People get to see them then and they can pop, uh, and realize what they're missing. So it, Absol- and, abso- absolutely. And so, and like in some of the art house cinemas um, in Ireland, I'm, I'm sure they do this in the UK as well. They still do that. So mm. like they, they, they put on like an Irish short film before the feature film. But I remember they yeah, like just like you said, Chris, like they used to do that too back in the day with like major feature films. I rem- actually remember going to see the film um, Divorcing Jack. Do you remember that film? I remember the film, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, God, who was the lead in it? Uh, Thulis, Long David Thulis maybe? Uh I think I, I can't remember. I yeah, I, I think it's David Thewlis. I could be wrong, but a British independent film from years ago, anyway. But I remember mm. going to see it, 
and there was a short film with Ewan McGregor before it started. Right. And and it was great. I actually remember it was about this a guy, it was like a fisherman, but kind of getting fisherman got hooked by the ocean and pulled into the ocean. Great little kind of visual conceit. But that thing of like, but that back then that wasn't unusual, you know, and it was a, it was a lovely thing. And as you said, so much more kind of gratifying than like watching a blast of ads and then a blast of trailers and then the film after for, yeah. after four forty minutes, like exactly, exactly. You know, there's so much. Yeah, it's, it's much more. Um, what's the word? Productive <laughs> with the time that you spend there. It is. It is. You know, it is. Although to me, I like watching the trailers, which is fine. But yeah, instead of the adverts, which is like I don't care. I'll, I'll watch. I you know. Oh, sorry, I was going to say a channel. Then I can't. If I, I'd say I'd watch a certain certain types of TV channel if I just want to watch know. adverts throughout the day. So I want to come to the cinema. You pay the money. I don't want to see that. I want to see film. So show me a short, then show me the film. <laughs> I've I've been thinking that for a while because if you're paying like upwards of twenty euros to go and see a film, mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm not banging out 20 quid to sit down for for 20 minutes and watch a load of ads that I that I like don't watch on television that I can sw- switch off. It's strange. I, I and I wonder has that kind of changed over the years because that's something I don't remember. I mean I remember there being ads and stuff back in the day but mm. I mean I think they've gotten more extensive. I think since, they, since yeah. then. <laughs> We're really getting into the state of cinema now like you know yeah, it's gonna be like an hour of an hour of adverts, and like, yeah. then we'll have the short film after, isn't it? But right, that's <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But you know why as well, Chris? I I think that's that's one of the reasons that like the net like the like the Netflix Netflix as a culture has kind of taken over is that mm. like, I because if if now like if I if ever I watch television or if I were watching a film on television, the idea of like getting like. 35 minutes into the film and then taking a break for eight minutes to watch people sell me things is is baffling you know mm. because i've gotten so used to watching things on netflix or yeah you know whether yeah. or yeah but there are, there are if it, like the break is when you hit pause to you know get a cup of tea or something but mm. you're not getting sold things now exactly. you are paying 15 euros a month for netflix but <laughs> but you know that's the product exactly exactly yeah. and i think it's just getting very minority report at the moment because <laughs> it is, it is <laughs> a bit. i mean uh, i was gonna say with, with, with you know with a, um, i'll try and bring it back on topic again in a minute but I'm just, it's, 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 it's <laughs> minor, cause I, I noticed there's a few things on amazon if i look on amazon for example no no not even on amazon if i'm google something and then i'll go on my facebook whatever i've googled suddenly appears and it's like where did you know that from yeah, and yeah. it's like it's oh it really freaks me out it's wild <laughs> it's very it's uh it's 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 creepy these things kind of follow you around the internet and it's like oh, yeah. that's that's going <laughs> way, way out of that it is yeah. it's scary it's scary <laughs> yeah so anyway sure we're here obviously the white horse yes um, which is fantastic because i believe it is also a nominal um it is what's the word it's i can't it's, even think of the word it's um Oh, you know what I mean. Uh, it's been for the awards than not the Oscars. It's, it's in, yeah, it's in consideration oh, so for for, for, for the Oscars. Yeah, yeah. So oh, sorry, we, we a bit of blab out from me. Sorry, sure. No, 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 no. No, it's a uh, it's uh, because it's not it's not a nomination. It's so it goes like uh, uh, in consideration, which is the long list, and then it goes into the short list, and then mm-hmm. there's nomina- the nomination. So there's three stages, and we're in the first stage now. But okay. it's because we we won a, um, uh, an Oscar qualifying short film festival. Uh, in um, uh, f- uh, the Foil Film Festival in Derry, um, mm-hmm. in t- at the end of 2019. So this was like before the world went splat, and yeah, um, yeah back when like actual actually going to film festivals was a thing before everything moved online. Um, but yeah, um, uh, so it's a some, um, a small selection of film festivals around the world are Oscar qualifying, mm-hmm. uh, ca- Academy affiliated, and uh, we got the best Irish short film at that, Brilliant. which puts us on the, the longest for the Oscars. So um, it's uh, very exciting um, for uh, for any filmmaker to hear the word Oscar in any context um, mm. is absolutely delightful. And but just as as an independent filmmaker as well, you know, there's. Um, <laughs> you know, there's there's a lot of ups and downs in the career. There's constant applying for for money. There's um, uh, um, there's a lot of kind of self motivation involved, um, mm-hmm. uh, which is which is a good thing and a tough thing at times. But uh, to get that kind of um, uh, validation is uh, is really good and it's great for motivation. And uh, yeah, will hopefully benefit us as we go on. Excellent, excellent. Yeah. And, and, and the film itself is a set in 1970s Ireland, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, don't, I mean, I can I guess I can read the, the, the synopsis from IMDb because everyone can read that, and I'm not going to without spoiling anything from everyone. Because yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, obviously he's got a young female patient who's um, 
Actually, I'm not going to say that. I'm just saying you've got a young female who, um, and she's obviously going to the telephone box and she's phoning her parents and things like that. And I, I didn't read it. I deliberately don't read the IMDb before I, <laughs> before I go on. So okay. I was watching it fresh uh, just to see what I got from it. So you do, you, you introduce to this young girl in a phone box. She's obviously run away from something. Mm. And um, obviously, you know, she's phoned the parents and my initial thought was she'd run away or she'd done drugs or something like that. And I was, you know, which is great because that's, obviously that's what you're, I think you're drawn into feeling. It's like, what's she done? Cause her mum knows. And she's like, you've done something very stupid. So I was like, all oh, right. Okay. So you've run away or you've done drugs or maybe you've gone off with some, you know, whatever. And so that's how I was, that's how my mind was playing out. And I was like, whoa, <laughs> you know, when it came to that, I was like, okay, that's a bit yeah. of a shock. Well, yeah. literally. <laughs> so, you know, <laughs> um, so yeah, the, the whole story that pans out and it's, um, I'm, so without going into spoiling it, it's a hell of a powerful story and sad as well because it's not fiction. This is, well, this did happen and it happened, you know, um, and for the reasons why as well, because, you know, I, she obviously, especially when you get the mother, that's when I started thinking because the mother was there and she was there saying, you know, when she's asking about, I can't remember the character's name, the, 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 her great female friend and then she was like no no you don't want to mess with her or anything like that yeah, and I was like, yeah. Well, hang on a minute <laughs> um and yeah and obviously that's the whole reason um yeah yeah do you know how that, that story came about when you're speaking with paul how did that how did that idea come about why did you want to show this why did you feel that this is an important thing to show well i get so we'd been kind of throwing around a few different ideas for, for, for short films and they were kind of generally kind of lighter topics. But one of the things we kept, kept coming back to was this phenomenon that had happened in, from like the kind of early eighties um, uh, and, and previously in the 20th century, which was this thing of like Irish psychiatric institutions mm -hmm. being used as, as the film says, catch alls for people considered abnormal yeah. or outsiders or whatever. Um, and that we would have known either in like through our respective families or through like friends of friends or, or like older, much older relatives mm -hmm. of people who had been basically put away for a couple of months or a couple of years for things that we would now consider to be like very minor medical, like, uh, you know, yeah. um, like anxiety based conditions, for mm -hmm. example, some, something like that. Um, but one of the other things that people were, were uh, regularly um, uh, institutionalized for was um, uh, homosexuality, mm -hmm. and um, we 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 had done some research on it um, in Ireland. It, it it was it was happening, but the the evidence uh, the, the the stories about it are often anecdotal for various reasons. W one of which is just that there was a lack of documentation at the time, but it was happening. Right. In the United Kingdom, it was um, uh, uh, much, much more extensively documented, and and was was happening in the United Kingdom as well. Um, yeah. But it was ha it, it was happening throughout the world. Um, interestingly, conversion therapy is not. I mean, it's still it's still technically legal in the UK and it's legal in Ireland. Mm -hmm. um, but thankfully, it has been you know relegated to um, uh, uh, out of outside of like psychiatric institutions and yeah. it's, it, it's small it's it's like ultra conservative right conservative groups like doing like pray the gay away like weekends and courses and things like this uh which is so like, like horrendous but um thankfully it has changed completely from an institutionalized thing which it was mm. decades ago um but <clears throat> we've just felt paul and i just felt that this was a story that it hadn't been explored dramatically through an irish context um, so what we actually did was we, we have been we've been developing a, a TV show, a, a mini series based on uh, Bridget's story, the girl in the in, yeah. the in the short film, her story. But um, we wanted to uh, make what is known as a proof of concept, which is just like a, it's a short film that kind of shows the world and kind of just shows mm -hmm. that you, you can create that world. And uh, we wanted to pick the 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 slice of life from that the the. The, the the best 10 minutes, the most effective 10 minutes from her entire story that would demonstrate her, her world. Um, it would imply a lot of the pre the prejudices around it, mm -hmm. um, but also kind of convey um, <clears throat> the enormity of what was happening. Yeah. Um, and that was the best, uh, her ringing home to, to, to speak to her parents was um, what was the, 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 the most effective slice of that narrative. 
but also what's what I what for me is the is most power, powerful about it is the is the relationship with them with the the mother and the fact that <clears throat> you can tell from uh how Bridget's mother speaks to her that that this that for her it's it's a it's parental yeah this is this, this isn't coming from a place of punishing her daughter mm-hmm. um this is coming from a place of um uh, 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 tough love yeah. you know my daughter needs to be fixed she's been hanging around with the wrong people uh this is the it's to her it's the equivalent of um of her like falling with a bad crowd or or may or like you know she she we just need to square her away for a while the doctors mm-hmm. will fix her and she and she'll come back and she'll be fine um the core thing of conversion therapy and um and like lgbt people going to psychiatric institutions being that like that there was something to fix and that this was this and this of course coming from like you know like um decades generations centuries of um uh dogma and, and prejudice yeah. Um, but in an Irish context, I think, Chris, it's especially interesting because even though that was happening up until like the the late 70s and and, and, uh, and early 80s, <clears throat> um, Ireland then in the in, in the interim um, in the past, like 35, 40 years has become a, uh, a beacon for civil liberties and LGBT yeah. rights um, in terms of um, uh, same sex mar- same sex marriage. Um, uh, and, uh, and and just LGBT rights in general. Um, Ireland is re- has really been extremely progressive, yeah. and uh, and it's and I, we have our you know uh, um, uh, female presidents, a, a, a gay Taoiseach. Mm-hmm. Um, these things have happened so quickly that it feels like we have kind of like l- we have thankfully left this um, um, these kind of strictures that we've had for for so so long, and we were kind of like. <laughs> frantically pushing out of us as, as, as fast as we can. So yeah, yeah it, uh, we, we, so we felt that in an Irish context, it was uh, a particularly interesting story to tell. Definitely. Definitely. I mean, as I say, it's, if, I mean, I was born in the 75, so mm. I was, I'm of this era, but I didn't know this was, I was quite shocked to be honest on the fact, like, especially, you know, when it, mm. going on in the eighties, when you're thinking really that's, you know, I, you know, of Alan Turing and stuff, obviously from the yes. Second World War, and the, you know, the, you know, the chemical castration and things, you know, things, famous things like that. But yeah. to hear that it was going on so recently in history as well, and you're thinking, you know, and how, like you said, how progressive and how much we have come on as a uh, as, as island as a nation, especially. On that, you know, you you know, it has been very forefront in leading those things. Yeah. Um, but how we as a, a people as well and a, and a generation have managed to, you know, actually just wake up and, <laughs> and basically and and, and stop persecution well with well, the areas persecution is still ongoing so i can't say it's fully stopped but you know mm-hmm. just to stop this madness like that which was absolutely crazy. institutionalizing people and shock therapy and things like that it's just yeah. um but i mean <clears throat> when you mentioned about people being done that i remember when i was a, a kid my neighbor's father had um depression and anxiety mm. and he was institutionalized just for that which is something that they could treat, you know, exactly. You'd be treated outside, but he was put in, in and he ended up committing suicide because it made him a hundred times worse. Oh my goodness. Um, and so, but you, and so I very much understand that, you know, obviously from that side of things, obviously not from the, from Bridget's point of view of being institutionalized just because she fell in love with another woman. You know, yeah. it's just, no, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's mind blowing. And, and, and it's, and it's fascinating as well. I mean, I'm, I'm a, uh, um, uh, a, a, a straight, almost forty-year-old man, right? And for me, and like, but I, but I grew up in um, uh, in, in in rural Ireland in like mm. the eighties, and nineties, and the and my awareness of like gay culture, LGBT culture was like non-existent up until yeah. up until I guess the early to mid nineties or whatever, just yeah. being just through music and, and things, but um, uh. But it's like it's mind blowing for me to see like like f- like kids of friends of mine these days mm. who they're they are the openness that they have about sexuality, gender mm-hmm. fluidity, uh, gay culture is amazing. It's fantastic, you know. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> but what what Paul and I then thought would, would be we felt like it would, it would be quite a, a pertinent time to make the film was because. If like it, where it's, it's mind blowing for us that that like this this conversion therapy was happening like in the seventies in Ireland, that like for the, the next generation after us, mm-hmm. it would be even even more mind blowing because they 
they would have had even less of um, uh, 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 any kind of um, prejudice against LGBT because yeah. it's be- because it's become so normalized. So for them to to realize this, like forty years ago, if mm-hmm. a person if a person if for sexuality if they were a gay that they could be their parents could put them away yeah and that would be absolutely sanctioned by the by the psychiatric institution and they wouldn't come back until they were fixed quote unquote quote unquote yeah. and the da- and the damage of course that that the that, that caused you know well yeah exactly it's not just it's not just there is it it's a lifelong it's lifelong you're gonna yeah. hate everything you're gonna be constantly traumatized by those memories mm-hmm. and it's it's just not and there are so many people out there now who probably are still traumatized because they've actually they had to go through it and we and it's about you know so so films like this it does it speaks up and it shows like you say it shows people now that you know that maybe that joe down the road or or bridget down the road yeah. you know who's at <clears throat> an age now the reason why she might be so quiet she might be so timid she might be so shy or introverted is a result because she's gone through or they've gone he's gone through this when they were younger and um, mm-hmm. you know and it's just to have them understand that and listen to and see, and see that message is, is vital so this film is really really good for that i think definitely thank you yeah yeah thank you i appreciate that and <clears throat> and you know and, and it's interesting that like we we also thought that like um even though in you know, like in our ireland being you know really um forward thinking in terms of um uh, like same-sex marriage and such mm-hmm. but then if you look at like what have happened in the states over the last four years and the fact that like the like the 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 Republican National Convention ran on a ticket of like uh, uh, no trans people in the military. Um, uh, they were they were refused to outlaw gay convert or um, um, conversion therapy, mm-hmm. and they ran and Trump ran that that same ticket in in, in twenty twenty, which was basically the, the 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 ticket was left unchanged. Yeah. So even even though like you know. In a, in a global sense, like there's absolutely massive progress being made in terms of LGBT rights, etc. Mm. But that progress is not guaranteed, and these, uh, you know, these kind of tribalisms and kind of uh, reversions to old uh, religious modes of thought can happen quite quickly if we don't, if they're not watched carefully, and if they're not addressed when they, um, when they occur.